Hey everyone, and welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about this L298N Universal Motor Driver. Um, this thing is pretty cool. It's got two full H-Bridge drivers to drive uh, two different brushed motors, or you can use this to drive a stepper motor with just a little bit of simple code. In fact, the code is so simple for this that I won't even use code. I'll just use my input board and I'll show you physically what it looks like. So first and foremost let's do a little bit of the tour of this module. Uh, so here you've got 12 volt ground and 5 volt that's these three pins here. The 5 volt is pretty neat you put 12 volts in and you actually have a 5 volt regulator here so you can actually power your microcontroller right from this if you've got a 5 volt microcontroller or a microcontroller with a low dropout um, linear regulator. Then you have your 5 volt out on this one here. Then you have your enable A which has a jumper which is jumpered to the 5 volts on here. So you can remove that and actually just use your microcontroller to turn on and off the motor here but I will show you another way to do it. Same thing on the other end, enable B, that's this output here, uh, tied high onto this jumper. And then you've got inputs 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now what inputs 1, 2, 3, and 4 does is 3 and 4 will enable the outputs on output 3 and 4, and it'll switch which one is positive, which one is negative in the full bridge, a uh, full H-bridge driver. Same thing with 1 and 2, that'll work that side it'll flip which one's available on the full bridge driver. So first and foremost we're going to talk about driving brushed motors with these modules. A brushed motor is the simplest of the simple uh, motors uh, you know they kind of look like these I got this one out of a printer um, they, they're ubiquitous they're everywhere but how they work is that if you put a positive voltage on the top here and a negative voltage on the bottom, the motor will spin in some direction. It'll depend how it's wired, but it'll spin in some direction. But then if you swap the leads from negative, from positive to negative and negative to positive, then the motor will actually spin in the other direction. And the L298N can handle two of these motors simultaneously, one on out three and four and one on out one and two. So that's a pretty easy way to drive two motors. So let's put the motors together onto this thing and I'll show you exactly how that works. Okay, let's see if I can make these motors work without causing a great issue on my bench here. Um, so this is how they're connected here. Oh, don't know if that's gonna be in focus. But anyways, got uh, two motors, one here, one on here. Uh, it doesn't matter which wire is connected to the outputs because, or to which output because we can swap them. Um, the enable A and B are pulled up to 5 volts on the board. The board's 5 volts is coming out onto my little um, tester board here. And uh, 12 volts and ground are coming from my Redin RD6018, which is just out of shot. So... Whenever I flip these switches, these four switches, one, two, three, four, that'll be the outputs, sort of one, two, three, and four on the board here, the inputs, I should say. So right now everything is active. If I flip one of these high, what should happen is this motor will turn either clockwise or counterclockwise, and hopefully it doesn't go flying all over the place. So watch the little red light here. There we go. So it's turning. If I flip it off, it turns off. So that was actually turning clockwise. Now if I turn the the other one, the output 2 or input 2, it's turning but now it's turning counterclockwise. So one is one direction, the other one is the other. This switch is a little iffy. Now I have the enable, don't forget, pulled up to enable it, but if I turn on both the motor stops. So you can break it by both having both on high. And when I bring it down, it's actually pulled low. I have pull down uh, resistors here. So it's the same thing as me going like this. In fact, maybe for this example, I should show you that everything is in the low position. So that's good. So that's one and two clockwise and counterclockwise. And now I can flip the other one. 
Okay, that one's going a lot faster because it's just simply a smaller motor. Okay, and then I'm going to flip the other and it goes the other direction. So basically, you can just have your Arduino uh, flip. You, you basically need four pins in your Arduino flipping up and down um, in order to control, you know, two different motors. Now that could be a left and a right motor. That could be a steering and a propeller. Whatever you want, you can program it in your Arduino. It only takes you four pins. And if you want ultimate control, like for safety, shut off the two motors. You can uh, get the enable pins in here and have six pins on your Arduino. But four is nice because you can use something little like a DigiSpark. And don't forget, you can use these both at the same time. And in whichever directions you want. So that's pretty neat. All you need is four digital outputs. That's it. Now let's go to something a little bit more complicated. So the other type of control that the this module is able to do is stepper motor controls, but I think stepper motors require a little bit more explanation. This is super simplified as an explanation, so yeah, if you want to go down to the comments and tell me I got it wrong, this is utterly simplified. All right, so what happens is you've got the same four wires that you had on your two motors, but now these windings, these, these individual windings, are both in the same stepper motor. You've got the stator. The stator literally just stays still. That's all it is, a stator. And you got the rotor, which in this case is a magnet, but it doesn't have to be simplified, remember? Um, this is a permanent magnet, and it'll be spinning this way. All right, so what happens is you put current through this winding. Let's say positive on this side, negative on this side. That makes an electromagnet with a south pole in our example. What will happen is that south pole will attract our rotor, attract the north side of our rotor. And then it'll just stay in that orientation. It'll take a step, if you will. Now, in order to make it do another step, you can just put positive negative here and drop this one. And then it'll pull the north around like this, another step. So you got a quarter of a turn per step. However, the cool thing is you can exploit the fact that these two coils are active. Watch this, positive negative here, this becomes the south pole, pulls the north over like this. Well, this stays on, because don't forget, you've got the output one and two and the three and four, they're separate. You can turn this one on, positive negative, that becomes a south pole. It pushes this south pole away and attracts this north pole until both of these have the same amount of pull. There we go. So now we've done actually 45 degrees in one step. Then we turn off this one on this one, and it'll do another 45 degrees, and then so on and so on around. Now you can go, this one can be a, a south, uh, a north, well this one stays south, and this will move like this, ting, and then so on and so on. You just do repeat the whole thing. Go positive here, negative there. That becomes a north pole, pulls the south over. Uh, this one, this one makes a south pole again, moves this one over. So that's what a stepper motor is. It does these steps. However, a modern stepper motor won't look this clear. It won't be like a big ka-chunk, 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 ka-chunk. Because most modern stepper motors have, I think it's 1.8 degrees per step and then you can micro step it to go even further down. No, this module though, this module I don't believe can do micro steps, but we're gonna give it a try anyways. So let me show you how that works. Okay, so like I said, you're gonna have to be a little bit patient with me because uh, these modern stepper motors have a lot, or, or they take a lot of uh, steps in order to uh, make a complete turn. Um, but here we go, so we have all four of these low and they're pulled low anyways it doesn't matter even if they're floating they're low um, and I've got one coil the green and uh, black and the other coil the red and blue and they're each on their own side and then here we go so hopefully you're gonna see this black piece of tape in action so I'm gonna turn one on you should see this jump okay see it just jumped just a tad okay and now I'm gonna turn on another one and depending on which polarity I put the other coil, it's going to go forward or backwards. 
it went forward. Okay, and now all I do is I'm going to simultaneously switch the uh, this output polarities, and it moved forward, and then this outputs polarities, and it moves forward, and then back and forth. So all your Arduino has to do is this, but a lot faster than I can do it, and you're going to get your stepper motor to step forward. There we go. So we almost made uh, like a quarter turn there just by changing the polarities. So, you know, it would be positive, negative, and then positive, negative, and then negative, positive, then negative, positive, positive, negative, positive, negative, negative, positive, negative, positive, back and forth, back and forth. And you do that enough and that will step all the way around. So, yeah. That's how you control stepper motors with this. And so that's it. If you can basically master the digital write on your Arduino, you can control up to two brushed motors or one stepper motor using the L298N module. There'll be a link to this module in the description below, as well as links to some interesting stuff like if you want to uh, order some of these boards, some stepper motors, I'll try to put a little bit of stuff down there. Um, using those links does help support the channel without costing you any extra. Thanks for watching.